So the teardowns are progressing nicely, already got 3 of the tubes done, and today it's time for the last tube in the signal path. The ECL82, or its Russian cousin that I've got right here, the 6F3P, triode beam tetrode vacuum tube. So what does this tube do? Well, basically it takes the audio signal that was detected by the EBF89, amplifies it to a sufficient degree so that it can be output through the speaker. So if you're curious what's inside this tube, then keep watching. So this is the tube I will be taking apart today. As I mentioned before, this is the Russian version of the ECL82, so it's the 6F3P tube. Now unfortunately you can't really make out the name anymore since it got rubbed away in time, but an easy way to separate the Russian manufactured tubes from other tubes is by the type of the getter. So you can see here that the getter is in the shape of a saucer, whereas in other tubes it's in the shape of this ring. So this is the first clue to t show you that this is a Russian made tube. Another thing is this OTK mark. Basically it's the quality control mark added when the tube was finished and tested. Now as I said this is a Russian tube, so it was made by the Russians. Now what are Russians renowned for? Well quality with precision instruments is not one of those. As you can see the structure on which the getter is standing is bent out of shape. Actually it's almost touching the cooling fin for the second grid. So this happened before I got this tube. You can actually see that the metal deposit on the upper side of the tube is still in line with the getter. So this happened during production. It didn't happen afterwards. Probably Ivan just dropped the tube, said that ah, it's not broken yet, we can fix it. So he added it inside the glass and that was that. Another thing you may notice is that normally with vacuum tubes you have these cooling fins. As we just saw. Now for the triode part we have cooling fins, but only one of them. As you can see the left part of the grid has a cooling fin, the right part doesn't. And it's not like it's fallen off because it's not inside the tube, there's nothing loose inside. This is the way they actually assembled it. So again a mark of very good quality. Now the audio amplifier in most tube radios was built something like this. You had two tubes, a triode and a pentode or beam tetrode, in which the triode part was responsible in amplifying the voltage of the input signal and then the output tube was responsible for driving the speaker through a transformer. Setting the volume is done at the beginning of the first tube, so right before the signal enters the triode, signal passes from the first stage to the second stage through a voltage isolating capacitor, and then you get a negative feedback from the output transformer, from the speaker, directly into the first stage. Basically this is the simplest type of amplifier that you can build with vacuum tubes. And the advantage of using the ECL82 tube, well you have both these tubes in the same package, so you don't need two separate vacuum tubes. So let's take the tube apart see exactly what's inside. So I've broken through the tube and as you can see again we got a tube that reacts really really slowly so this upper metal layer is very slow to react but it will get there. Oh well. So managed to finish cutting up the tube. Now I can slowly remove it. There we go. This is the 6F3P triode beam tetrode vacuum tube. Now again if you look at the glass envelope we can see that there's quite a lot of residue on the inside left from the tube operating and the metal oxide coating on the upper side still hasn't reacted. So this is also a very overused tube where this metal oxide layer has cooked over time. Now the reason why I took this tube apart was that the triode part was broken. And if we look a bit down at the connections, we can see that the beam tetrode, so this thing here on the right, has some very very thick filament wires, so these are roughly one millimeter thick. But on the other side, the wires are very very thin, so you can barely see them here. Much thinner than the beam tetrode part. Now we can see that the getter was bent out of shape by my doing, so this was a bit straighter. But this whole structure was out of shape from the beginning, so it should have been something like this. So, say, so it should have been a bit straighter. We can also see this single cooling fin on only one of the shafts from the grid of the triode. And that's about it. So let's try and see what's inside the beam tetrode 
and the triode. So what's the difference between a pentode and a beam tetrode? Well, the pentode has five elements. It has the anode, the cathode, and three grids. Now the beam tetrode, on the other hand, is roughly the same thing. It has the anode and the cathode, two grids, and then it has a third grid, which isn't really built like a grid, it's built with a couple of plates to concentrate the beam of electrons, hence the name beam tetrode. Now, where did this tube come from? Well, back in the 30s, the pentode design was owned by the Philips Mollard company. And since nobody else was allowed to make it, without paying some royalties, of course, the boffins at EMI came up with this beam tetrode design, which was different, but the same but different. Now, this actually functions a bit differently than the normal pentode. It has some advantages, it's more efficient compared to the pentode, it has lower harmonics, but it also needs larger input signals. But since this is the most common power output tube, but it's better when we're talking about audio and power amplification. We can start with the triode, simply I'll need to unbend these clips and then one of the pieces of the anode should come off. It should, we will see. So it seems that the clips are off, we can already see that, no we can't. Let's try and separate the two pieces of anode from the triode part, without destroying everything. Seems that both pieces of anode are going up through this isolator piece, that ain't good. There we go. This tube was made to be taken apart. And we can now clearly see the triode part of this vacuum tube. We can see the grid, so nicely woven wire. On the inside we got the cathode, so this shiny metal tube with electron emissive coating, so this white stuff. And then the anode is this outer dark colored metal and of which we got piece right here. Good, time to move on to the beam tetrode part. Let's see. So why isn't it coming apart? Come on, there you go. It just needed a little bit more encouragement. This seems to be the link to the anode that goes out into the pin, if I'm not mistaken. And there seems to be a clip also up here. Not sure if you can see it very well. But let's try to remove this also. So we can start to see inside the tube. But... It is not pretty. Yeah, I'll need to cut this. There we go. You can see this was the pin going out into the... So this was the connection from the vacuum tube pin to the anode. And on the upper side we still have this, but that was easily removed. And it's done. So the piece of anode has been removed. And now we can start to see, this shouldn't be in there, yeah, that, that got in there while I was taking it apart. So now we can see the inside of the beam that rode. So we can see the cathode right there in the middle, then we have two grids built like proper grids, so we have this nice wire mesh, and then the third grid are these two plates, so one is out here and the other one is somewhere inside there. And these are basically the beam forming grids. Why this tube is called the beam tetrode. You can call it the pentode since this can be called a grid, but the official name is the beam tetrode. We can also see here on the upper side the cooling fins for the first and second grid. So the two pieces of grid are interconnected with this metal plate, this one for the second grid, this one for the first grid. These are responsible for cooling the grid so that you don't get secondary emissions. 
So, hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.